Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell and cancer biologist, but I also work on educational outreach. And part of that outreach is this series of videos on YouTube here on our stem cell YouTube channel. And today's video is kind of in that spirit, in that theme about stem cells. And the focus is on the idea of using stem cell therapy for heart disease. And I've recently done a post on that uh, to kind of fact check and give you updates on clinical trials and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we can kind of go through that post together and hopefully you'll learn a lot about where we are at uh, for uh, using stem cells for heart disease. So just to kind of orient you, this is my site, The Niche. Uh, it used to just be a stem cell blog and you can still kind of go to the blog. But now we have a lot of different resources, uh, stem cell videos, uh, resources for scientists and for patients, uh, just general resources about stem cells. So if you like this video or some of the other videos, uh, please subscribe. So here's this recent post about the idea of using stem cells for heart disease. And part of the reason I did this post is there's just a lot of, uh, I guess I would say hype out there and misinformation. Unfortunately, there are a lot of for-profit clinics that claim they can actually help people with heart disease using stem cells when in fact, uh, we're not really there yet. Although, you know, there are a lot of clinical trials. So there, I think there's hope for the future. So lately I've been kind of, uh, structuring these blog posts such that you can kind of have like a table of contents to see what's uh, the different sections and you can click on them to jump ahead. So just to kind of broadly introduce you to this topic, unfortunately, like I was um, uh, indicating, there's really nothing in the way of stem cells for heart disease today. That doesn't mean that in the future, something won't come along that's uh, very promising. Uh, the more encouraging news again, is that there are hundreds of clinical trials out there. Some of these trials have sort of had these little hints uh, that there might be some efficacy there. More trials have been pretty discouraging. And so I think we need to be somewhat cautious, especially again, for anyone who claims they can treat heart disease today. So in terms of those clinical trials I mentioned, here's a map from clinicaltrials.gov that I generated. And you can kind of see where in different locations in the world, di uh, different trials for stem cells for heart disease are going on, lots in Europe. Um, plenty in the US and then a variety of other countries. And in total, I found about almost 400 of these trials of stem cells for heart disease. And, and one of the interesting things is that different biotech companies and academic researchers are trying out different types of stem cells. And it kind of makes sense, right? Not, it's not gonna be obvious necessarily which type of stem cell is gonna be best for treating heart disease. And as I'll talk about in a minute, heart disease is kind of a broad umbrella term. And, and so, one type of stem cell might be more useful for a certain kind of heart disease and then a different one for some other kind of heart issue. For example, a company called Biocardia um, is using bone marrow cells to try to heart, treat heart disease. A professor at the University of Miami, Josh Hare, is using something called MSCs or mesenchymal stromal and stem cells in the trial he's doing. Um, sometimes the stem cells that are being tested of heart disease are your own cells. And that's, um, uh, and ex for example, again, here we have biocardia. And then Dr. Hare is using uh, what we call allogeneic cells for heart disease uh, trials. And that's just means someone else's uh, cells. Um, so I just give some links here, different resources. You can see some things are a little more encouraging. Some things are less encouraging. And so I think one of the challenges, I talked about how you could potentially use different kinds of stem cells for heart disease. One of the challenges is how do you get those cells? Let's say you find you know, cells that would be great for heart disease. How do you actually get them into the heart? And this is not a trivial thing, right? Our heart is in there beating and um, heart is mostly muscle, but you can't just kind of squirt stem cells, inject them into the heart muscle itself necessarily and hope for something positive to happen. So one, one way to actually potentially treat uh, heart issues is literally to actually inject the heart essentially like with a syringe full of cells or maybe stem cells. Um, this, you know, you can't, you can't potentially try that. I, I think um, there are potentially risks to that, right? So you might get the cells in the wrong place. Um, you can't necessarily expect if you just squirt uh, a solution of stem cells in a liquid into heart muscle, that they're gonna stay there and kind of find a home there. We call that engraftment and do something useful. So you can try that. And I just, for me as a stem cell biologist, that seems somewhat riskier. Uh, I think what a lot of um, clinical trials are trying to do is 
is do something different. And that is kind of flood the stem cells into the coronary arteries. So kind of deliver them via the blood uh, in those arteries that supply the heart itself with blood. And those are the same ones that can get clogged um, with certain kinds of heart disease leading to heart attacks. And here, I think that's an interesting idea. So the stem cells or other kinds of cells would kind of flow into the heart and kind of spread out through all those capillaries in the heart. Again, we don't really know um, how well those cells would kind of make a home in the heart or do something useful. So this, this kind of illustrates different challenges with these uh, different approaches. Uh, I think uh, as a side note here, I, I mentioned heart organoids, which are kind of a cool, just in the lab kind of research. Um, another way that stem cells might be helpful for heart disease is this more indirect way through research. And so uh, us scientists can use stem cells to make uh, essentially like heart muscle, even little beating things that look like hearts in the lab called heart organoids and test out different drugs on those, test out um, genetic approaches, maybe the correct uh, mutations that might contribute to heart disease. So um, that area of heart organoids is really interesting. So when we think about, okay, we talk about the kinds of cells we might use, the approaches to deliver them to the heart. Uh, if we can get them in there, how would they actually help uh, potential heart disease? And so I go through a few different ways this might work. So for someone who's having a problem with their heart muscle, so say they had a heart attack before and, and some of their heart muscle died, I think the hope would be that stem cells might actually be able to regrow some of that heart muscle. So for instance, if you could in some way get new cells in there, new stem cells, um, maybe you could replace the damaged heart muscle. Another potential approach uh, for this kind of objective is to not use stem cells, but try to get new heart muscle cells in there, perhaps grown from the patient's own cells via this method called iPS cells. So, uh, so one goal might be to regrow lost heart muscle, again, lost perhaps uh, due to a heart attack. Of course, kind of chronologically, what comes before a heart attack is your arteries start clogging up, right? Um, during coronary artery disease. So here, I think it's a little bit trickier, right? Once you've kind of, you know, if you have a coronary artery and it's getting clogged up, so the actual lumen, the open space for the blood to flow is getting smaller and you either inject stem cells into the wall of that coronary artery or you put them into blood and they flow through the clogging up coronary artery. How would that be useful? I think it's a little harder to imagine how that might help. Uh, I suppose you could have sort of an anti-inflammatory kind of effect, but would the cells get in there in a useful way? Would that, you know, would that be something that you should try or is it too risky? Cause you could imagine if you put cells in there and they form little clots around them, they might actually just entirely clog up that um, coronary artery that say was only 50 or 80% clogged before. So it seems like kind of a risky approach. Another goal maybe would be to start uh, to stop, sorry, I would, I would say um, an arrhythmia. So an abnormal rhythm of the heart. Uh, this could be due to problems with the pacemaker cells in the heart or some tissue damage. Um, I think some people are interested in using stem cells for that kind of heart issue as well. But it's, again, it's kind of tricky to see how that might work. Um, you could potentially use stem cells in a lab to grow what we kind of call like pacemaker cells and essentially grow like a little pacing bit of heart tissue and swap that in, in place of maybe a dysfunctional pacemaker. So then we're talking about like a natural pacemaker in the heart, very complicated goal, but perhaps something that, you know, could be achieved. So as we're thinking about um, the idea of stem cell therapy for heart disease, really have to think about what kind of heart disease um, a person might have. And again, I just really wanna stress that the clinical trials so far have been pretty discouraging. And so there are some, um, some uh, cardiac researchers who think that this is just an unattainable goal to use stem cells to help hearts. I, I don't know if it's quite that extreme, but it, you know, a lot of the research has been somewhat discouraging. So it's important also to highlight, you know, if you're trying a stem cell therapy for heart disease, um, it's not only that it may fail to work, but also things could go wrong. So I already talked about how if you inject in um, stem cells or other kinds of cells just into the bloodstream or into the coronary artery feeding the heart, they could clog things up. So that's definitely a risk. If you're taking the approach to inject the, the stem cells into the tissue of the heart itself, you might get them in the wrong place. You could damage the pacemaking structure in the heart. So you could cause arrhythmias. Uh, you might grow muscle kind of in the wrong place of the heart. So instead of this elegant beating, you know, there's some extra 
muscle tissue where it's not supposed to be. So I think there's a lot that can go wrong here. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm interested to follow all these clinical trials that are ongoing. Again, I really want to caution you, you know, if you do have heart disease, first of all, I'm not a physician, so I'm not giving medical advice here. I'm a, a PhD researcher, um, but you should really think about these things carefully. Talk to your cardiologist. Uh, I would definitely recommend against going to any place right now, whether in the U.S. or elsewhere, that claims that they can treat heart disease right now with stem cells. I think most of that is just going to be an effort uh, by those clinics just trying to take your money. So, so definitely not something I would advise. Uh, if it's if it's an area you're interested in, um, follow follow clinical trials, follow my my website. You know, do your homework, talk to your cardiologist, um, and really think carefully about this. So here's some uh, references I've included on my site. Again, my website is ipsl.com. I'll include a link to this post that I've been talking about, about stem cell therapy for heart disease in the description of the video. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing now. And thank you for watching. And again, please check out our other videos. And if you like them, uh, please subscribe. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.